Borneo is the third largest island in the world and the largest in Asia. At the geographic center of maritime Southeast Asia, in relation to major Indonesian islands, it is located north of Java, west of Sulawesi, and east of Sumatra. The island is politically divided among three countries, Malaysia and Brunei in the north, and Indonesia to the south. Approximately 73% of the island is Indonesian territory. In the north, the East Malaysian states of Sabah and Sarawak make up about 26% of the island. Additionally, the Malaysian Federal Territory of Labuan is situated on a small island just off the coast of Borneo. The sovereign state of Brunei, located on the north coast, comprises about 1% of Borneo's land area. A little more than half of the island is in the northern hemisphere, including Brunei and the Malaysian portion, while the Indonesian portion spans the northern and southern hemispheres. Borneo is home to one of the oldest rainforests in the world. The island is known by many names. Internationally it is known as Borneo, derived from European contact with the Brunei Kingdom in the 16th century during the Age of Exploration. On a map from around 1601, Brunei City is referred to as Borneo, and the whole island is also labeled Borneo. The name Borneo may derive from the Sanskrit word Varana, meaning either water or Varana, the Hindu god of rain. The local population called it Clemantan or Kalimantan, which was derived from the Sanskrit word Kalimantana, meaning burning weather possibly to describe its hot and humid tropical weather. Indonesian historian Slamet Malayana suggests that the name Kalimantana was derived from Sanskrit terms Kala and Manthana, which possibly describes the heat of the weather. In earlier times, the island was known by other names. In 977, Chinese records began to use the term Boni to refer to Borneo. In 1225, it was also mentioned by the Chinese official Chao Ju Kuo. The Javanese manuscript Nagra Kratagama, written by Majapahit court poet Puperpanka in 1365, mentioned the island as Nusa Tanyung Nagra, which means the island of the Tanjungpura kingdom. Nevertheless, the same manuscript also mentioned Burun and other polities on the island. Location map of Borneo in maritime Southeast Asia, the Red River Fault is included in the map. Borneo was formed through Mesozoic accretion of microcontinental fragments, a phyllite terrains and island are crust onto a Paleozoic continental core. At the beginning of the Cenozoic Borneo formed a promontory of Sunda land which partly separated from Asian mainland by the Proto-South China Sea. The oceanic part of the Proto-South China Sea was subducted during the Paleogene period and a large accretionary complex formed along the northwestern of the island of Borneo. In the early Miocene uplift of the accretionary complex occurred as a result of underthrusting of thin continental crust in northwest. The uplift may have also resulted from shortening due to the counterclockwise rotation of Borneo between 20 and 10 mega annum as a consequence of Australia-Southeast Asia collision. Large volumes of sediment were shed into basins, which scattered offshore to the west, north and east of Borneo as well into middle. A Neogene basin which is currently exposed in large areas of eastern and southern Sabah. In southeast Sabah, the Miocene to recent island arc terrains of the Sulu archipelago extend onshore into Borneo with the older volcanic arc was. The result of southeast dipping subduction while the younger volcanics are likely resulted from northwest dipping subduction the Celebes Sea. Mount Kinabalu in Malaysia, the highest summit of the island before sea levels rose at the end of the last ice age, Borneo was part of the mainland of Asia. Forming, with Java and Sumatra, the upland regions of a peninsula that extended east from present-day Indochina. The South China Sea and Gulf of Thailand now submerged the former low-lying areas of the peninsula. Deeper waters separating Borneo from neighboring Sulawesi prevented a land connection to that island, creating the divide known as Wallace's Line between Asian and Australia New Guinea biological regions. The island today is surrounded by the South China Sea to the north and northwest, the Sulu Sea to the northeast, the Celebes Sea and the Makassar Strait to the east, and the Java Sea and Karamata Strait to the south. To the west of Borneo are the Malay Peninsula and Sumatra. To the south and east are islands of Indonesia, Java and Sulawesi, respectively. To the northeast are the Philippine Islands. With an area of 743,330 square kilometers, it is the third largest island in the world, and is the largest island of Asia. Its highest point is Mount Kinabalu in Sabah, Malaysia, with an elevation of 4,095 meters. Kapuas River in Indonesia, at 1,000 kilometers in length, it is the longest river in Borneo. The largest river system is the Kapuas in West Kalimantan, with a length of 1,000 kilometers. 
Other major rivers include the Maakam in East Kalimantan Long, the Burrito, Kaiyan, and Mendawai in South Kalimantan. 600 km and 800 km long respectively, Rajong in Sarawak Long, and Kainabatangan in Sabah Long. Borneo has significant cave systems. In Sarawak, the Clearwater Cave has one of the world's longest underground rivers while Deer Cave is home to over 3 million bats, with guano accumulated to over 100 meters deep. The Gamantong Caves in Sabah has been dubbed as the Cockroach Cave due to the presence of millions of cockroaches inside the cave. The Gunu Mulu National Park in Sarawak and Sankalirang Mankali Hat Karst in East Kalimantan which particularly a karst areas contains thousands of smaller caves. The critically endangered Borneo orangutan, a great ape endemic to Borneo the Borneo rainforest is estimated to be around 140 million years old, making it one of the oldest rainforests in the world. It is the center of the evolution and distribution of many endemic species of plants and animals, and the rainforest is one of the few remaining natural habitats for the endangered Borneo orangutan. It is an important refuge for many endemic forest species, including the Borneo elephant, the eastern Sumatran rhinoceros, the Bornean clouded leopard, the hose's palm civet and the diet fruit bat. NASA satellite image of Borneo on May 19, 2002 Peat swamp forests occupy the entire coastline of Borneo. The soil of the peat swamp is comparatively infertile, while it is known to be the home of various bird species such as the hook-billed bulbul, helmeted hornbill and rhinoceros hornbill. There are about 15,000 species of flowering plants with 3,000 species of trees, 221 species of terrestrial mammals and 420 species of resident birds in Borneo. There are about 440 freshwater fish species in Borneo. The Borneo River shark is known only from the Kinabatangan River. In 2010, the World Wide Fund for Nature stated that 123 species have been discovered in Borneo since the Heart of Borneo Agreement was signed in 2007. The WWF has classified the island into seven distinct ecoregions. Most are lowland regions, the highest elevations of Mount Kinabalu are home to the Kinabalu Mountain Alpine Meadow, an alpine shrubland notable for its numerous endemic species, including many orchids. According to analysis of data from Global Forest Watch, the Indonesian portion of Borneo lost 10. 7 million hectares of tree cover between 2002 and 2019, of which 4 million hectares was primary forest, compared with Malaysian Borneo's 4. 4 million hectares of tree cover loss in 1. 9 million hectares of primary forest cover loss. As of 2020, Indonesian Borneo accounts for 72% of the island's tree cover, Malaysian Borneo 27%, and Brunei 1%. Primary forest in Indonesia accounts for 44% of Borneo's overall tree cover. Logging road in East Kalimantan, Indonesia The island historically had extensive rainforest cover, but the area was reduced due to heavy logging by the Indonesian and Malaysian wood industry. Especially with the large demands of raw materials from industrial countries along with the conversion of forest lands for large-scale agricultural purposes. Half of the annual global tropical timber acquisition comes from Borneo. Palm oil plantations have been widely developed and are rapidly encroaching on the last remnants of primary rainforest. Forest fires since 1997, started by the locals to clear the forests for plantations were exacerbated by an exceptionally dry El Nino season, worsening the annual shrinkage of the rainforest. During these fires, hot spots were visible on satellite images and the resulting haze frequently affected Brunei, Indonesia, and Malaysia. The haze could also reach southern Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam and the Philippines as evidenced on the 2015 Southeast Asian haze. The orchid Micoranthes farinosa is specific to this island list of highest peaks in Borneo by elevation. List of longest river in Borneo by length. Dayak, the main indigenous people in the island, were feared for their headhunting practices. In November 2018, scientists reported the discovery of the oldest known figurative art painting, over 40,000 years old of an unknown animal, in the cave of Lubang Jiriji Sule on the island of Borneo. According to ancient Chinese, Indian and Japanese manuscripts, western coastal cities of Borneo had become trading ports by the first millennium AD. In Chinese manuscripts, gold, camphor, tortoise shells, hornbill ivory, rhinoceros horn, crane crest, beeswax, lake of wood, dragon's blood, rattan, Edible birds' nests and various spices were described as among the most valuable items from Borneo. The Indians named Borneo Savarna Pumi and also Carpurid Vipa. The Javanese named Borneo Purid Vipa, or Diamond Island. 
Archaeological findings in the Sarawak River Delta reveal that the area was a thriving center of trade between India and China from the 6th century until about 1300. Territorial loss of the thalassocracy of the Sultanate of Brunei from 1400 to 1890 due to the beginning of Western imperialism stone pillars bearing inscriptions. In the Palaba script, found in Kutai along the Maakam River in East Kalimantan and dating to around the second half of the 4th century. Constitute some of the oldest evidence of Hindu influence in Southeast Asia. By the 14th century, Borneo became a vassal state of Majapahit, later changing its allegiance to the Ming dynasty of China. The religion of Islam entered the island in the 10th century, following the arrival of Muslim traders who later converted many indigenous peoples in the coastal areas. The Sultanate of Brunei declared independence from Majapahit following the death of Majapahit Emperor in mid-14th century. During its golden age under Bolkia from the 15th century to the 17th century, the Bruneian Empire ruled almost the entire coastal area of Borneo and several islands in the Philippines. During the 1450s, Shurful Hashem Syed Abu Bakr, an Arab born in Johor, arrived in Sulu from Malacca. In 1457, he founded the Sultanate of Sulu. He titled himself as Paduka Maulana Maasari Sharif Sultan Hashem Abu Bakr. Following their independence in 1578 from Brunei's influence, the Sulus began to expand their thalassocracy to parts of the northern Borneo. Both the sultanates who ruled northern Borneo had traditionally engaged in trade with China by means of the frequently arriving Chinese junks. Despite the thalassocracy of the sultanates, Borneo's interior region remained free from the rule of any kingdoms. British flag hoisted for the first time on the island of Labuan on December 24, 1846 since the fall of Malacca in 1511. Portuguese merchants traded regularly with Borneo, and especially with Brunei from 1530. Having visited Brunei's capital, the Portuguese described the place as surrounded by a stone wall. While Borneo was seen as rich, the Portuguese did not make any attempts to conquer it. The Spanish visit to Brunei led to the Castilian War in 1578. The English began to trade with Sambas of southern Borneo in 1609, while the Dutch only began their trade in 1644, to Banjar and Martapura, also in the southern Borneo. The Dutch tried to settle the island of Balambangan, north of Borneo, in the second half of the 18th century, but withdrew by 1797. In 1812, the Sultan in southern Borneo ceded his forts to the English East India Company. The English, led by Stamford Raffles, then tried to establish an intervention in Sambas but failed. Although they managed to defeat the Sultanate the next year and declared a blockade on all ports in Borneo except Brunei, Banjarmasin, and Pontianak, the project was cancelled by the British Governor-General Lord Minto in India as it was too expensive. At the beginning of British and Dutch exploration on the island, they described the island of Borneo as full of headhunters, with the indigenous in the interior practicing cannibalism. And the waters around the island infested with pirates, especially between the northeastern Borneo and the southern Philippines. The Malay and Sea Dyke pirates preyed on maritime shipping in the waters between Singapore and Hong Kong from their haven in Borneo, along with the attacks by Alanans of the Moro pirates from the southern Philippines, such as in the Battle of Mecca. Map of the island divided between the British and the Dutch, 1898. The present boundaries of Malaysia, Indonesia and Brunei are largely inherited from the British and Dutch colonial rules. The Dutch began to intervene in the southern part of the island upon resuming contact in 1815, posting residents to Banjarmasin, Pontianak and Sambas and assistant residents to Landak and Mampawa. The Sultanate of Brunei in 1842 granted large parts of land in Sarawak to the English adventurer James Brooke, as a reward for his help in quelling a local rebellion. Brooke established the Raj of Sarawak and was recognized as its Raja after paying a fee to the Sultanate. He established a monarchy, and the Brooke dynasty ruled Sarawak for 100 years, the leaders were known as the White Rajas. Brooke also acquired the island of Labuan for Great Britain in 1846 through the Treaty of Labuan with the Sultan of Brunei. Omar Ali Saifuddin II on December 18, 1846. The region of northern Borneo came under the administration of North Borneo Chartered Company following the acquisition of territory from the Sultanates of Brunei and Sulu by a German businessman and adventurer named Baron von Overbeck. Before it was passed to British Dent Brothers. Further expansion by the British continued into the Borneo interior. This led the 26th Sultan of Brunei, Hashem Jalilul Allah Makamatan to appeal the British to halt such efforts and as a result a treaty of protection was signed in 1888, rendering Brunei a British protectorate. 
the Dayak tribe during an Arau ceremony in Tengarong before the acquisition by the British, the Americans also managed to establish their temporary presence in northwestern Borneo after acquiring a parcel of land from the Sultanate of Brunei. A company known as American Trading Company of Borneo was formed by Joseph William Torrey, Thomas Bradley Harris and several Chinese investors, establishing a colony named Elena in the Kamani's area. The colony failed and was abandoned, due to denials of financial backing, especially by the U.S. government, and to diseases and riots among the workers. Before Tory left, he managed to sell the land to the German businessman, Overbeck. Meanwhile, the Germans under William Frederick Schuck were awarded a parcel of land in northeastern Borneo of the Sandakan Bay from the Sultanate of Sulu where he conducted business and exported large quantities of arms. Opium, textiles and tobacco to Sulu before the land was also passed to Overbeck by the Sultanate. Arab Malay Sultan of Pontianak in 1930 prior to the recognition of Spanish presence in the Philippine archipelago, a protocol known as the Madrid Protocol of 1885 was signed between the governments of the United Kingdom, Germany, and Spain in Madrid to cement Spanish influence and recognize their sovereignty over the Sultanate of Sulu, in return for Spain's relinquishing its claim to the former possessions of the Sultanate in northern Borneo. The British administration then established the first railway network in northern Borneo, known as the North Borneo Railway. During this time, the British sponsored a large number of Chinese workers to migrate to northern Borneo to work in European plantation and mines, and the Dutch followed suit to increase their economic production. By 1888, North Borneo, Sarawak and Brunei in northern Borneo had become British protectorate. The area in southern Borneo was made Dutch protectorate in 1891. The Dutch who already claimed the whole Borneo were asked by Britain to delimit their boundaries between the two colonial territories to avoid further conflicts. The British and Dutch governments had signed the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1824 to exchange trading ports in Malay Peninsula and Sumatra that were under their controls and assert spheres of influence. This resulted in indirectly establishing British and Dutch controlled areas in the North and South respectively. In 1895, Marcus Samuel received a concession in the Kudia area of East Borneo, and based on oil seepages in the Mahakam River Delta, Mark Abraham struck oil in February 1897. This was the discovery of the Sangha Sangha oil field, a refinery was built in Balikpapan, and discovery of the Samboja oil field followed in 1909. In 1901, the Pamusian oil field was discovered on Tarakan, and the Bunyu oil field in 1929. Royal Dutch Shell discovered the Miri oil field in 1910, and the Saria oil field in 1929. Japanese troops marched through the streets of Labuan on January 14, 1942. American support craft moving towards Victoria and Brown Beach to assist the landing of the members of Australian 24th Infantry Brigade on the island during Operation Obo 6. June 10, 1945 During World War II, Japanese forces gained control and occupied most areas of Borneo from 1941 to 1945. In the first stage of the war, the British saw the Japanese advance to Borneo as motivated by political and territorial ambitions rather than economic factors. The occupation drove many people in the coastal towns to the interior, searching for food and escaping the Japanese. The Chinese residents in Borneo, especially with the Sino-Japanese War and mainland China mostly resisted the Japanese occupation. Following the formation of resistance movements in northern Borneo such as the Jesselton Revolt, many innocent indigenous and Chinese people were executed by the Japanese for their alleged involvement. In Kalimantan, the Japanese also killed many Malay intellectuals, executing all the Malay sultans of West Kalimantan in the Pontianak incidents, together with Chinese people who were already against the Japanese for suspecting them to be threats. Sultan Muhammad Ibrahim Shafiu Din II of Sambas was executed in 1944. The Sultanate was thereafter suspended and replaced by a Japanese council. The Japanese also set up Pusat Tanaga Rakyat in the Indonesian archipelago in 1943, although it was abolished the following year when it became too nationalistic. Some of the Indonesian nationalists like Sukarno and Hatta who had returned from Dutch exile began to cooperate with the Japanese. Shortly after his release, Sukarno became president of the Central Advisory Council, an advisory council for South Borneo, Celebes, and Lesser Sunda, set up in February 1945. Since the fall of Singapore, the Japanese sent several thousand of British and Australian prisoners of war to camps in Borneo such as Batu Lintong Camp. From the Sanda Khan campsite, only six of some 2,500 prisoners survived after they were forced to march in an event known as the Sanda Khan Death March. 
In addition, of the total of 17,488 Japanese laborers brought in by the Japanese during the occupation, only 1,500 survived mainly due to starvation, harsh working conditions and maltreatment. The Dayak and other indigenous people played a role in guerrilla warfare against the occupying forces, particularly in the Kapit Division. They temporarily revived headhunting of Japanese toward the end of the war, with Allied Z Special Unit provided assistance to them. Australia contributed significantly to the liberation of Borneo. The Australian Imperial Force was sent to Borneo to fight off the Japanese. Together with other allies, the island was completely liberated in 1945. Sukarno visiting Pontianak, West Kalimantan in 1963 in May 1945, officials in Tokyo suggested that whether northern Borneo should be included in the proposed new country of Indonesia should be separately determined based on the desires of its indigenous people and following the disposition of Malaya. Sukarno and Muhammad Yamin meanwhile continuously advocated for a greater Indonesian republic. Towards the end of the war, Japan decided to give an early independence to a new proposed country of Indonesia on July 17, 1945, with an independence committee meeting scheduled for August 19, 1945. However, following the surrender of Japan to the Allied forces, the meeting was shelved. Sukarno and Hatta continued the plan by unilaterally declaring independence, although the Dutch tried to retake their colonial possession in Borneo. The southern part of the island achieved its independence through the proclamation of Indonesian independence on August 17, 1945. The southern part saw guerrilla conflicts followed by Dutch blockade to cut supplies for nationalists within the region. While nationalist guerrillas supporting the inclusion of southern Borneo in the new Indonesian Republic were active in Katapong, and to lesser extent in Sambas where they rallied with the red-white flag which became the flag of Indonesia. Most of the Chinese residents in southern Borneo expected to be liberated by Chinese nationalist troops from mainland China and to integrate their districts as an overseas province of China. Meanwhile, Sarawak and Sabah in northern Borneo became separate British Crown colonies in 1946. In 1961, Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman of the Independent Federation of Malaya desired to unite Malaya, the British colonies of Sarawak, North Borneo, Singapore and the Protectorate of Brunei under the proposed Federation of Malaysia. The idea was heavily opposed by the governments in both Indonesia and the Philippines as well from communist sympathizers and nationalists in Borneo. Sukarno, as the president of the new republic, perceiving the British trying to maintain their presence in northern Borneo and Malay Peninsula, he decided to launch a military infiltration later known as the Confrontation from 1962 to 1969. As a response to the growing opposition, the British deployed their armed forces to guard their colonies against Indonesian and communist revolts, which was also participated by Australia and New Zealand. Queen's Own Highlanders 1st Battalion conducted patrol to search for enemy positions in the jungle of Brunei. The Philippines opposed the newly proposed federation, claiming the eastern part of North Borneo as part of its territory as a former possession of the Sultanate of Sulu. The Philippine government mostly based their claim on the Sultanate of Sulu's session agreement with the British North Borneo Company, as by now the Sultanate had come under the jurisdiction of the Philippine Republican Administration, which therefore should inherit the Sulu former territories. The Philippine government also claimed that the heirs of the Sultanate had ceded all their territorial rights to the Republic. The Sultanate of Brunei at the first welcomed the proposal of a new larger federation. Meanwhile, the Brunei People's Party led by A.M. Azahari desired to reunify Brunei, Sarawak and North Borneo into one federation known as the North Borneo Federation, Malay, Satuan. Negara Kalimantan Utara, where the Sultan of Brunei would be the head of state for the federation, though Azahari had his own intention to abolish the Brunei monarchy. To make Brunei more democratic, and to integrate the territory and other former British colonies in Borneo into Indonesia, with the support from the latter government. This directly led to the Brunei Revolt, which thwarted Azahari's attempt and forced him to escape to Indonesia. Brunei withdrew from being part of the new Federation of Malaysia due to some disagreements on other issues while political leaders in Sarawak and North Borneo continued to favor inclusion in a larger federation. With the continuous opposition from Indonesia and the Philippines, the Cobalt Commission was established to discover the feeling of the native populations in northern Borneo, it found the people greatly in favor of federation with various stipulations. The federation was successfully achieved with the inclusion of northern Borneo through the Malaysia Agreement on September 16, 1963. To this day, 
The area in northern Borneo is still subjected to attacks by Moro pirates since the 18th century and militant from groups such as Abu Sayyaf since 2000 in the frequent cross-border attacks. During the administration of Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos, the president made some attempts to destabilize the state of Sabah, although his plan failed and resulted in the Jabata massacre and later the insurgency in the southern Philippines. In August 2019, Indonesian President Yoko Widodo announced a plan to move the capital of Indonesia from Jakarta to a newly established location in the East Kalimantan province in Borneo. Indigenous peoples with their musical instruments, dance and their respective traditional dress the demonym for Borneo is Bornean. Borneo has 21. 3 million inhabitants, a population density of 29 inhabitants per square kilometer. Most of the population lives in coastal cities, although the hinterland has small towns and villages along the rivers. The population consists mainly of Dayak ethnic groups, Malay, Banjar, Orang Ulu, Chinese and Katazan Dusan. The Chinese, who make up 29% of the population of Sarawak and 17% of total population in West Kalimantan, Indonesia are descendants of immigrants primarily from southeastern China. In Sabah during the administration of Mustafa Harun of the United Sabah National Organization in the 1970s, thousands of Muslim immigrants and refugees from the southern Philippines island of Mindanao and the island of Sulawesi. In Indonesia were given sanctuary and later identity cards in the bid to increase the Muslim population of the state, a policy later known as Project IC. Due to the high number of crimes attributed to the new migrant populations. Ethnic tension between the indigenous and migrant populations has risen up to the present. Balikpapan, a major city in Borneo and Kalimantan, since the 1990s, the Indonesian government has undertaken an intense transmigration program. To that end it has financed the relocation of poor, landless families from Java, Madura, and Bali. By 2001, transmigrants made up 21% of the population in central Kalimantan. Since the 1990s, the indigenous Dayak and Malays have resisted encroachment by these migrants, and violent conflict has occurred between some transmigrant and indigenous populations. In the 1999 Sambas riots, Dayaks and Malays joined together to massacre thousands of the Madurese migrants. In Kalimantan, thousands were killed in 2001 fighting between Madurese transmigrants and the Dayak people in the Sampit conflict. Religion in Indonesian Borneo Islam Protestantism Roman Catholic Buddhism Hinduism Confucianism and others Religion in Malaysian Borneo Islam Christianity Buddhism Confucianism and others unknown no religion Hinduism religion in Brunei Islam Christianity Buddhism other political divisions of Borneo the island of Borneo is divided administratively by three countries. Borneo's economy depends mainly on agriculture, logging and mining, oil and gas, and ecotourism. Brunei's economy is highly dependent on the oil and gas production sector, and the country has become one of the largest oil producers in Southeast Asia. The Malaysian states of Sabah and Sarawak are both top exporters of timber. Sabah is also known as the agricultural producer of rubber, cacao, and vegetables, and for its fisheries, while Sabah, Sarawak and Labuan export liquefied natural gas and petroleum. The Indonesian provinces of Kalimantan are mostly dependent on mining sectors despite also being involved in logging and oil and gas explorations. Thanks for watching.